I'm, I'm trying to read it with my so lousy contacts, but new bleachers and some of those other things tonight. Or sure, this would be the time to do it. We budget about 176,000 in capital improvements every year. We're not recommending that you go up or down in that account. Um, but of that 176,000, we'd like to make room for the replacement of the bleachers at the high school. And if we can't do it all this year, uh, we'd like to save the portion that's in there and do them in year two. Uh, you eventually, as much as you don't want to hear it, have to replace the bleachers at the high school. If you try to do the repair, uh, you just throw them underway. Um, they're 40 years old. And if you think about some of the stuff you have in your own home, that's not a bad life expectancy. So uh, we do have to replace the bleachers. We think we've got a funding mechanism to get you there. Um, and we can either, you know, hopefully if the price of oil comes down, we can replace the bleachers uh, this year. And if not, uh, I really think that's, and Greg can expand on it. But we had the boiler, we had the hot water heater. This is number three on the list, unless we have another unexpected emergency. Can we see oh, the list sometime. Yeah, I, <laughs> I'd like to see the list. Do you have the list, Greg? Of what he's going to spend on. Of what you want. Cents. Yeah, what you yeah. want to spend money on. That would be really helpful. Well, the, the, there's also a roof mentioned in here. Yeah. Yep. Um, we'll look at the list. Well, we're also curious, I think, is what Mary Lynn, what, what finally is going to start, I hope, doing a capital improvement three, five year plan, and it's always to do those things over time rather than loading it up in the last three years. So if we have to do some this year, then, you know, we got to start this year. Yeah. We have a list coming around. Hmm. I do have a question about the futures, Greg. Sure. Are they safe? Uh, I, I guess that's who you ask. Oh, uh, see, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now we can't. Cur currently, the, the I mean, we have to are in need of some major repairs. Right. Um, we have cracked welds, uh, 34 broken boards, uh, no locking mechanism that's functioning. I think one bank out of the, um, uh, let's see, we get to that. So there's 12 banks that we have in there works. So that means the village is. It's a bank. A bank. If you look in, you walk into our gymnasium, you will see two main banks, and each one of those has three individuals. So there's three pieces that could come out in each section. Does that make sense? Make Between sense. the curtains. Yeah, I might need you to draw a picture. <laughs> <laughs> what no, means is a section of bleachers is called a bank. Okay, section is. Okay. So we have groups in there, okay? As you walk into any of the doors <coughs> coming in, you'll notice there's three then a curtain, then three more, same thing on the other side. Okay, of those particular things, six on each side, we only have one that still actually locks into place, which is, keeps it from moving when people are on it. So I don't know if you stepped on our bleachers and you notice all of a sudden they slide. Not at all, and I stepped on your bleachers before. Yeah, we don't maybe lock. Maybe I stepped on the locked ones. It, it, it's distinct possibly, they don't lock all the time, sometimes they do, sometimes they don't, but the consistent locking is not there. Um, to give you an idea, just to fix the locks and replace the broken boards doesn't get us in compliance whatsoever, but just to fix the, the, the broken boards, the locks, and the broken welds that we have is $29,000. And that's from Hussey themselves who manufactured the bleachers. To make those bleachers compliant to current codes, it's over $120,000. I can replace them for $130,000. And you're taking 40-year-old things and you're polishing them up. That's the best way I can describe it. Uh, or you take a Model A Ford and put a new starter on it. Um, so there is, a, a, there is a need to replace these because of, of a whole lot of safety reasons. Um, you know, when you have broken welds, it kind of tells you you have an issue there. And that needs to be addressed. The immediate need is a minimum of $29,000 just to make a repair. It doesn't fix all our other problems that we have with bleachers. Well, the question I have is, I mean, not that I want to waste taxpayers' money, but I'd rather spend money to fix the bleachers now than face a lawsuit or, or have students injured or whatever, if it's really that serious an issue. It, it, is, it is an issue, a, a major concern of mine because of these issues. Um, when we have an inspector who comes in and looks at them and says, you have broken welds, you have 
34 cracked or broken boards that is part of the support mechanism, yes, there is a concern. And yes, it needs to be addressed. What we're talking about is do we make those repairs or do we put that money into repair them or do we replace them to something that can be fully compliant to all the code, applicable codes that are out there. We don't have ADA access. We don't have defined aisles. Um, the particular bleaches we have right now, you can pull a middle section out, there's no rails on it. So you can pull it all the way out and go to the top. There's nothing keeping you from falling onto the ground. So those are the kind of concerns that, that come through with, with the particular bleachers that we have. Well, so it sounds like a fairly serious problem. I'm looking at your 223. I don't see, and I may be missing it, I don't see a repair in that list. No, our recommendation is to replace the bleachers, not to repair them. We think repairing them is throwing money away. It's much better to replace them. You're eventually going to have to replace them. <coughs> I guess my question is, if, if our current budgeted capital improvements is 176, I mean, it's, it's my opinion that rather than hoping that we save money on oil, hoping that we save money on something else, we're going to just bite the bullet and buy, and buy it. And if we get some other savings out there, I'm sure we can find either use for it or help us with a contingency or help with carry forward to next year on taxes. Mm -hmm. This is an item, it seems to me, that we should bite the bullet on and raise our capital improvement budget to pay for it. Mm -hmm. And if we later find ways to, to make up for that, great. If not, we've, d we've done the safety issue. And if we do find extra money, because then fine. We roll it over to next year and raise taxes less next year. That, that would be my opinion. Well, it's certainly something the board can do. Uh, what we're trying to do is keep the budget uh, at the recommended level or lower. We just don't think it's a I, year I understand. Where you can start increasing things. Um, what, what I would suggest <coughs> is that we, we um, take that up when we do our reconcili reconciliation workshop uh, mm -hmm. in our last workshop when we're, when we're addressing any, any items we don't have ten tentative agreement on um, that this that we, we could revisit that. That's fine with me, because I, I, th I think that's an issue we should seriously debate. And uh, just, I, I mean, maybe Pauline or you, but adding 47000 to our total budget, it's going to be a minuscule percentage. Mm -hmm. and do you know what would be off the top of your head, Pauline? Uh, no, I don't. It would certainly be like two-tenths of one percent, and that taxes is going to be something like 0.3. I'm making these up. <laughs> it's, it's that of that magnitude is what I'm trying to say. I don't think it makes any difference, and I'll stop now. One question on the bleachers: Is this assuming um, you know 99% occupancy? I mean, I imagine if we look at attendance, and do we have to have the same amount of seating capacity as we did when? In this did? particular option, um, we currently have approximately 1,500 seating capacity. In order to meet the code requirements. ADA, proper aisles, rails, all that. We're going to go down to about 1,300 in seating capacity just to meet those requirements. I did look into cutting that back, say, to 1,200. The actual cost savings was so small that it really made no sense not to maximize what we could put in there. Um, you know, in a $130,000 job, if you're going to save $4,000 by taking a roll out, it's, a, it's not enough savings to justify the, the end result. But is our average attendance at these events 1,100 or is it 400? I'm just trying to get it's it. It's 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 it varies. It's it really it's depends on the. I've seen it. the bleachers packed in there with some of the basketball games. So, so we we have demand for uh, bleachers to support 1,200 seats. If I can, the uh, we've only had to use it once uh, in the time that I've been principal, fortunately. But um, the gym is also our backup. Uh, site for graduation um, that did happen a couple of years ago, and that is actually probably the one occasion where you that absolutely maximizes everything. And we would absolutely need at least 1,300 plus. Then we put um, I think about 500 seats on the gym, gymnasium floor itself. So our our basketball games, for example, certainly don't average or come close to averaging 12 or 1,300. But there are some games that get reasonably close to that and it seems to me given that unless we change our site of graduation which I would hate to do because it's because Fort Williams is so wonderful um, I think we need that gym back up 
and, and we couldn't do it. Uh, it. It would not be realistic um, if we went down significantly. Okay. Thank you very much. And I want to be clear, I'm not selling this on a safety issue, though that is a concern. I'm selling it to you on a uh, cost effectiveness. I think they're throwing money away on something you've got to eventually replace. I think we overplay some safety issues. It's not that it's not a safety issue, but it, that's not the concern I have. The concern I have is spending your money wisely, and you're going to have to replace those bleachers eventually, so why not do it? I want to stress that we're doing it within the confines of the recommended budget. We're not asking for any additional expenditures. So I we're really not adding 47 to the, to the well, budget? Well, not right not, now. Not our recommendation to do that. <coughs> I, think you, I think you've got the, well, the money. <laughs> I think you've got the money to replace the, the budget. I really um, think the savings that I outlined with the new boiler are, are conservative. Uh, they were not estimated liberally. They, they're a conservative estimate. And um, something you'd consider replacing something, knocking something off the Kaplan group plan. You got the list of the other things, and if you have any questions about how we're spending that, the rest of the 176, you know, the big item is that roof, that middle school. Roof is old too, that needs, part of the middle school roof needs replacement. And that will stop some of the leaks that you've seen over there. Not all of them, you've got a flat roof, as Greg says, we'll never stop all the leaks, but it will take care of the major deficiencies. Painting the middle school. In my regular um, operational budget, I have painting, uh, regular painting uh, going on. Um, I carry uh, funds for us to do painting in-house and some contracted, so that does vary depending on uh, where we're doing, but we do try to target areas regularly. Uh, to give an example, uh, last school vacation we painted all the bathrooms uh, in, in the high school that did baseline bathrooms, the student bathrooms were all painted. So those are the kind of things we keep up regularly. So. Any even outside? We are going to be doing some outside work this summer. Okay. Um, I think you're going to see some work uh, above the uh, gymnasium area at um, Pond Cove Middle School, actually the middle school gymnasium area. We'll be doing some works and painting around that. Um, I. In my overall impression, may be incorrect, but I get the impression that we're we're fixing things that have to be fixed, as opposed to looking forward and maybe phasing in. Uh, I mean, we call it capital improvement, but really fixing something that really needs to be fixed. A capital fixing a roof is not necessarily a capital improvement; it's a capital expenditure because you already have a bad roof. I mean, is there any, is there anything that we that and, and I keep hearing about maybe a, a capital improvement plan over time, but you seem to have built into this uh, must-haves. Is there anything in here that would be prudent for us to start doing now so that in the long run it costs us less money? Well, I think that's it's a loaded question because you can always say, we need to do this and we need to do that. This I is have it with in the long run will save us money. <laughs> I guess you look at that in multiple ways. I, my opinion is, we're doing what we need to get done in, the, in, in, in what we have to work with, okay? If you want to throw the pie out there and say, hey, I'm going to give you all the money you could ever no. want, we could get a lot of things done, of course. That's not what I'm asking. Realistically. Well, let me rephrase the question. Sure. We're, it seems to me we're fixing things that absolutely have to be fixed. We have no choice. You don't have cost-benefit analysis or whatever. But a lot of times you have funds that you know that you have to repair something years two, three, four. You don't have to do it right now, but you build a, a, a sinking fund, whatever you want to call it, to prepare for that. I don't see that here. Well, well I think eventually, let me, let me help out David. Okay. Then, uh, I think eventually we'll get there. Um, that's what that capital improvement plan that we're working on. Um, so. I think when times get better, you can increase this amount to a significant kind of change, so you're getting at that. Right now, well, it's can I hard you, to do that. Can I ask you a direct question? Yeah. When we, do you have any of them going to get this capital improvement plan? Probably April or May. Okay, so if we're patching what we need to for or getting through next year, we can then consider that capital improvement plan in, uh, I call it year two, mm -hmm. if we want to. 
Okay. Yeah, I don't think, if you look at the long-range financial condition of the district, I don't see you 